on today's episode. I'm a big fan of building things from kits and I've been doing it an awfully long time. Uh, this servo tester, my uh, uh, much missed Maplin, looking inside we can see the chip in the middle there has a date code from 1993, which makes this uh, a relative youngster at only 26. And recently I built this transistor tester which we're going to use today to help build this new kit, which is a multi-output voltage power supply. This is going to be extremely useful for many projects where you need obviously plus and minus 12, plus or minus 5, and plus 3.3 volts. It cannot supply very much current, but that is usually not a problem to us for many circuits using just operational amplifiers or Arduino type things. We don't need an awful lot of current. So let's see what we get in our kit. We get a circuit board. What's this? Uh, it's a packing list of all the parts that we can check against if there's anything missing. And some surface mount components and our usual discrete components. I'm extremely impressed with the quality of these Highland kits. Um, it, uh, it certainly rivals any other kits that I've ever built. Probably even surpasses the, 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 the Maplin circuit board there for its quality. This is also a very good kit as an introduction to surface mount components. So we have a range of, uh, of components here that we need to, to surface mount. And if you've never done it before, this kit will be an excellent introduction for you. One thing that you will need from the get-go is a decent soldering iron, temperature controlled. And I built this Haku T12 soldering iron from a kit also. And uh, you'll see links in the description and uh, a link up there as well. The normal practice I use when building these kits is to fit the lowest profile components first which in this case are going to be the little resistors. So without further ado, let's get those resistors soldered in place. In common with most Highland kits, there is no instructions, but the board is so clearly laid out that it's not really difficult to find out where the components go. So 2K2 resistor there, for example. There are only five resistors to put in place. In common with most Highland kits, the Provided resistors are these five band color codes, which can be difficult to interpret for uh, beginners, which is why I like to check each one on a meter here, and then there can be no doubt 2200 ohms, 12k ohms, and finally three 1k ohms. As I always mention, when you're cutting these, it is fun sometimes just to let them ping around all over the place, but please don't. Because one day they will surely find their way somewhere where they are not wanted. Now things get really interesting. We can turn our attention to the surface mount components. Here we have five linear regulators for the plus and minus voltage rails. The main switching regulator, this XL6008, which boosts the input voltage, and two tiny, tiny Schottky diodes. And it's very difficult to see. There is a, a line at one end to indicate the positive. Uh, some people have actually confused these with capacitors, but they're not their Schottky diodes. Uh, given the tininess of what's going on, I think it's time to break out the microscope. Here we can see the placement for one of the Schottky diodes and clearly it will sit across there. The accepted wisdom is to tin one end of the pad and then solder that in place and then do the other end.
We use a similar technique when installing the boost converter. Note the silk screen layout, that's quite important so that we get maximum thermal contact with the pads underneath. Once the first pad is tacked down, it's simply a matter of soldering the remainder. Next, we have to solder down the tab for the component. For this, I'm going to add a little liquid flux to help draw the solder underneath the component. Also, I've changed the tip of my soldering iron to this chisel or knife point just to feed solder in and it will be drawn underneath the component. A similar process now with the regulators. Take a special care that you select the right one. The numbers are not very distinct. So this is the 78M12. To complete this phase of the soldering, I'm just going to flow some solder from the underside to make sure we get the best conductivity possible. The last of the surface mount components are the inductors. Again, a similar technique with the chisel tip. A nice neat joint. I've moved ahead and fitted the small capacitors. They're all the same value, so there's nothing to concern ourselves about with those. Next will be the electrolytic capacitors. Now, clearly these are polarized and indicated with the negative symbol and the positive lead is longer. On the circuit board, the stripy side is the negative. So this guy will go in and be soldered like that. We're nearing the final assembly now. All the capacitors are in place. We have the poly fuse, which lives over there. We've got the USB connector, LEDs to indicate the output. For the input, um, just to ring the changes, I've put in a, a green one because that seems to make more sense to me for power on is green and the outputs will be red. But that's just me, OCD perhaps. Something to note about the connections for the DC output is that they won't fit in the board unless they're connected together. They have this Lego type arrangement, so you have to slide them together and now they fit into the circuit board neatly. Let's get those final pieces put together. Now the board is complete and I've done a visual inspection to make sure that uh, as far as I can tell everything is in the correct place so that we can do our first turn on test. Before we do that we need to place the heat sinks for the regulators and the boost converter. Now contrary to many photos that I've seen, I believe the heat sinks should be placed on the back. In the design of the board they went to a lot of trouble to put the plated through holes that when the extra solder is applied will provide a good path from the metal tab of each of the devices to the back side to uh, dissipate the heat. For me it uh, makes much more sense to put the heat sinks on the back then it's not going to sit very neatly on the bench, is it? Well, I have a solution to that as well. Having the benefit of a 3D printer, I've just printed up a, a simple base with some standoffs, and that's going to sit on there. Get that done. Here's our finished item, and I think it looks very neat indeed. Let's do our first test now. I've connected the USB connector here, and we have our power monitor in the USB charger. Uh, just keep an eye on the current there when we plug it in. Very briefly it went up to nearly half an amp and now it's settled back down to about uh, 100 milliamps. And that is caused by the boost converter 
as it kicks into life. We can see our LEDs all on, which is good news. Let's check our output voltages. So down here we should have ground and plus three. Excellent. Here we have ground in the middle, minus five and plus five, so pretty much spot on there. And finally, our minus 12 and plus 12, 11.95. Those voltages are within tolerance of, of what we need, considering we're using the 5 volt input. Obviously, using this 5 volt input, you're not going to be able to draw very much current from these outputs at all. It would be better to use the other input, which you can supply 5 to 24 volts on. Let's change that over for a, a wall walt. I'm very fond of these cheap and cheerful wall wart type chargers. Now testing with our 12 volt input. Nothing really appears to have changed. So just double check here. Plus 3.3, minus 5, plus 5. Reading the same, minus 12.23. And finally 11.95. So all is good. If you've wondered what these headers here are for, uh, I believe when you're using this maybe with an Arduino breakout type board, um, it's quite simple to just use these headers rather than having to use the screw terminals there. So in summary, I'm very happy with the board. I always learn something when I build from a, from a kit, and this time I learned a little more about surface mount soldering, which went very well, I believe. I think I can thoroughly recommend this kit. I don't think it can be beaten for its, uh, its value for money, and I'm sure you'll be seeing it in many future projects of mine.